please rewrite it as a poem. To Dennis and Lisa, thanks a ton for helping me bring the team today. We'd like to get more feedback. It's fun. From engineers, the target users, hooray. <laughs> What we build needs to be just right for you, our internal crew. We want to make sure it feels just right. What we build, it's all for you. That is amazing. If you're not familiar with ChatGPT yet, you probably will be soon. Well, I'm about to tell you about it, but it's kind of all the rage these days, and for good reason. This is a game-changing AI tool that can be used for so many things, and it, we're really only just starting to figure out how it can be used and what kind of things it can do. I want to tell you about how you can use it to make your English better. Yeah, it's a really good tool for making your English better. Now, this is, I think, particularly useful if you're working and have to use English. Maybe the number one initial use of ChatGPT for English will be writing really good emails. And now, this is a good and a bad thing because it takes less it takes pressure off of you needing to actually learn how to write good emails and it gives you a tool for doing so without having to really use your brain so much. So I see the good and the bad, but it is, it is extremely useful. But you can also use it as a more general English correcting tool or a way to rephrase what you said so that you can learn how to say something that you want to say more naturally. We're going to look at two examples, two use cases, and then I'll let you play with it. I, I strongly encourage you to do so, though, because it is such a revolutionary and cool tool, and I'm just beginning to figure out how to use it myself. This is the beginning, but once I really learn it and once I really figure out how many applications it has, I'm going to be putting together more videos and maybe even a course on using ChatGPT to improve your English. Okay, so here's ChatGPT. It is free, of course. And we're going to start with, I guess, what we could call an awkward, slightly awkward email. Not very well, let's just say not very well written, okay? Or at least it could be better simplified, right? When it comes to emails, the goal is usually to be as concise and clear as possible, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my email as I would write it. And then I'm going to take out the dear Brian or dear somebody and the last thing. I'm just going to have the main body of the email that I want to say clearly. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT to revise it. Now, this is where you want to play around with how you ask. You might use the word correct, but if you use the word correct, it might emphasize just fixing grammar, which is great. But if you say revise and rewrite, that's the best results I've had so far. If you say revise and rewrite and then give a specific style, you're going to get better results. At least that's what I've found, okay? So here's my phrasing. Please revise this and rewrite it in a concise yet professional style. Now for emails, you would be concise and professional. If you're writing a short story, then you may, you may not want to add concise and professional. It might be something like, I don't know, concise and vivid or in a sort of Victorian era style, something like that, right? And that's maybe for another lesson, but we're talking about just correcting, correcting an email to start, okay? So let's just do this, and it gives you different results every time. So we'll put in uh, this whole request, including the text of the email. And the email goes like this. Uh, Thanks for Dennis and Lisa for helping me bring together the team 
today or bring the team together today. The reason that we'd like to get more feedback on our system from engineers is that because you guys are the internal target users for the stuffs we are working on. We want to make sure, <laughs> I need to get out of the way, that what we build is, is perfect for you. So there's a bit of awkwardness there using stuffs, for example. It's a little wordy, it definitely has more words than need to be there to express these things. Uh, thanks for Dennis and Lisa, is this saying it to them or not? So it's a bit awkward. All right, so let's see what we get. If we say, please revise this and rewrite it in a concise yet professional style. Here we go. Come on, ChatGPT. Thank you to Dennis and Lisa for helping bring the team together today. As the internal target users of our current work, we value your feedback on our system. Your input will ensure that we build uh, that what we build is is tailored to meet your needs. Thank you for your assistance. Whoa. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> now, you always want to review it to make sure that it's saying what you want to say because the thanks for Lisa could be addressed to Dennis and Lisa rather than thank you to. If you say thank you to Dennis and Lisa, I'm not talking to Dennis and Lisa. I may be addressing the broader team and shouting out Dennis and Lisa. So if that's what I'm trying to do, this is correct. If I'm talking to Dennis and Lisa only, then I'll say, thank you, comma, Dennis and Lisa, comma, for helping. So it would be a small change. And you might there just want to copy and paste, make the small changes. Now, I also, I'm not crazy about the use of the word work here, as I love the phrasing of this sentence, right? As the internal target, use, uh, target users of our current work, comma, we value your feedback. This is a beautiful sentence. I absolutely love this sort of uh, a dependent clause followed by an independent clause. This is how I often choose to write. It's a great structure. But work, mm, I might instead change the word work to project. So I might say, thank you to Dennis and Lisa for helping bring the team together today. As the internal target users of our current project, we value your feedback. And then you could just end the sentence there. You could just say, we value your feedback. I don't want to focus on, on, on what, just we value your feedback. Then your input will ensure. Okay, now let's, let's try it again one more time and just see. If we change the parameters, I want to see what happens if I just say, please revise this and rewrite it in a concise style. And let's see if it's any different this way. Thank you to Dennis and Lisa for helping bring the team together today. As the internal target users of our current work, your feedback on our system is crucial to ensure that uh, what we build is tailored to meet your needs. Okay, so it's a little different, but it's very close, I would say. Now, what makes it less professional? Because I said in the first prompt, I said, uh, I said concise yet professional, so I think Thank you for your assistance feels like a very professional sounding sort of phrase to end this. And so getting rid of the professional parameter, and these are parameters I'm adding, concise, professional. These are parameters that I have, right? What if I, what if I want to get crazy? Please uh, revise this and rewrite it in, this, in, in uh, the style of a... 1930s gangster, like Al Capone, that sort of, ah, see, that sort of thing. All right, let's see what it comes up with. Uh-oh, maybe inappropriate or offensive or harms, or harm, how would that be harmful? Okay, all right, all right. Let's say in, in the style of Bugs Bunny, okay? Bugs Bunny is the cartoon rabbit. Oh, oh. Okay, so not doing a specific style, I guess. That's interesting. Okay, uh, let's say in the style of Elizabethan English. Here we go. My gratitude... <laughs> My gratitude extends 
to Dennis and Lisa for their assistance in convening the whole team today. Convening, wow. We seek to garner further feedback on our system from engineers as you are the internal target users of the endeavors we currently undertake. <laughs> we desire to ensure that all our endeavors are fully satisfactory to you. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, let's, I got to try one more. Okay, please revise this and rewrite it in the style of Middle English. Can I, can I do this? Does it know Middle English? Ancient English. My thanks to Dennis and Lisa for their aid in assembling the team today. We wish to gain further, f okay, eh, not so much. Maybe it doesn't know Middle English. That's interesting though. Uh, rewrite it as a dog. Can I rewrite it as a dog? Okay, nope, I didn't think so. Uh, revise this and I rewrite it in texting English with lots of emojis. Okay, well, okay, so not able to do certain things here. Please rewrite it as a poem. Okay, so apparently ChatGPT cannot try to imitate a specific group of people or a specific thing that could potentially come across as offensive in any way. To, here's a poem about it. To Dennis and Lisa, thanks a ton for helping me bring the team today. We'd like to get more feedback. It's fun. From engineers, the target users, hooray. <laughs> What we build needs to be just right for you, our internal crew. We want to make sure it feels just right. What we build, it's all for you. That is amazing. That is so amazing. That is insane. Rewrite it for the year 2056. Okay, yeah. I'm hitting a wall with this writing in the style of thing. And I'm I'm getting a sense that they just want to be very that it could do it, but they but the the people running this have decided they want to avoid anything that's going to be potentially offensive. Okay. Now, I did a video a while ago talking about a chunk of text that I had found uh, and this is where we get into, okay, so this is a great way to write emails, right? You write your email, you put it in chat GPT, you use the prompt that I gave you, your, your email problems are solved. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. You should still learn to write emails, take my email course, but you, you don't need to worry about this anymore. Maybe it's crazy, but what about improving more generally? Now, what you can do is speak, get a transcript, and then you can do it sentence by sentence or in paragraphs, have it rewrite what you say. If you do it sentence by sentence, you're going to get a more granular breakdown of this. So you might say, for example, okay, you talk for three minutes, you record that in something like Otter, which I've recommended before. Copy and paste the transcript of what you said, the speech to text transcript. It turns everything you say into text. And then sentence by sentence, paste it into ChatGPT and give it a similar prompt like, please correct this. Now, you can do that in Grammarly, but Grammarly is just going to give you simple corrections. You might get higher level feedback from ChatGPT. ChatGPT understands what you're saying. It understands the language structures. It understands what you're trying to get at. Grammarly does not. Grammarly just knows, okay, there's not supposed to be a comma there, capitalize that, you misspelled this word. That's what all Grammarly does. Grammarly has no idea what you're trying to say. ChatGPT does know what you're trying to say, and that's a gigantic difference, okay? So we're going to take a another chunk of text, and this is one we've looked at before from a previous video that I've done. This video I rewrote, 
the text to make it more natural. And I want to see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, this is just an example of what we could call bad. Let's just call it terrible writing. Okay, I won't read the whole thing here, but like every day, the weather in Europe was abnormally wet because it rained in Switzerland on 130 out of the 183 days from April to December. If I was Mary Shelley, I might decide to write a book too. After all, it was the only... Okay, so many problems here. It's so wordy. Sentence structure is horrible. It's confusing. There's tons of redundancy. You can check out that video. I did a full sort of uh, review of this. And this is just one I found, found online. Let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. My prompt here is, please completely rewrite. Now, before, what I said was for the email... Okay, I said, please revise and write in a concise and professional style. The reason that I use revise and rewrite is, is so that it decreases the chance that it's going to just get really creative and say kind of whatever it wants with the same basic meaning. I want it to be mostly what I said, but I want ChatGPT to fix it and make it more clear. That's all. Okay. But for this one, I'm saying completely rewrite. I want you to completely rewrite it. That means I'm giving it permission to do way more. I'm giving it permission to change whatever it wants. I'm not trying to fit the same general structure. I'm giving it more, more freedom, essentially, when I say completely. And I experimented a little bit with this before. I tried using rewrite by itself. And when I just said rewrite by itself, it was really close to the original, except it had corrected stuff, but it was still a bit wordy. But when I said completely rewrite, then suddenly it got really creative and it decided to come up with some crazy stuff. So let's see what it comes up with here. Okay. I dislike rainy days. In 1816, look how, okay, first of all, Look how much shorter this is. This is half the length. That is a good thing. Usually, bad writing is less concise. It's very wordy. It's very redundant. There are a lot of issues, right? Already, I can tell that it's a major improvement. But let's actually read through it. I dislike rainy days. Clear syntax right at the start. Interesting first sentence. It pops. In 1816, Europe experienced unusually wet weather, with 130 out of 183 days in Switzerland experiencing rain from April to September. Now, that's fine. I think that's really good, and it's a lot better than what it was before. But in the last version that I did before, uh, before this, because ChatGPT Chat will give you a different answer each time, I was amazed because it didn't say 130 out of 183 days. It said six months. It said it took that concept and changed it to six months. It, it didn't say the days. It said with six months of bad weather uh, in Switzerland from April to September, something like that, which was amazing that it had abstracted that concept and there was no 130 or anything, right? Okay, so uh, Inside with Nothing to Do was inspired to write a novel as a result of this boredom. I can understand her motivation. If there was nothing else to do, writing a novel might seem like a good idea. This is at least five times better, right? But let's try it again. So I'm going to change the parameters slightly. And my parameters are going to be, please rewrite this according to the guidelines of the elements of style. Now that's a book by Strunk and White. It's a classic writing book and I'm curious if it understands those concepts. Okay. I detest rainy days. In 1916, Europe experienced abnormally wet weather with rain in Switzerland on 130 out of 183 days from April to September. If I were Mary Shelley, I might also decide to write a book due to the boredom caused by being stuck inside without a TV or other activities. Then it does the quote. So it changes the order of things, which is pretty interesting. That is very interesting. All right. All right. Let's try one more. 
please completely rewrite this as briefly as possible. I dislike, uh, I dislike rainy days. In 1816, Europe had abnormally wet weather and Mary Shelley wrote a novel due to boredom from being stuck inside without TV or other activities. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's about right. That's, that is really crazy. All right, I have to try one more. I can't help myself. Please completely rewrite this concisely without numbers. Okay, yep, yeah, that's what I want to see if I can get rid of that 130 out of 183. That's what I'm trying to say. I dislike rainy days. In 1816, the weather in Europe was abnormally wet, and Mary Shelley wrote a novel due to boredom from being stuck. Okay. Uh, okay, what if I just say, please, please rewrite this very clearly. Can I say that? Simply and uh, let's just say clearly. I dislike rainy days. In 1816, the weather in Europe was abnormally wet. Okay, but so we, I'm trying to get rid of the... 130 out of 183 because I don't like that but all right well we've still got much 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 better English so I really think this is just the beginning I think this is just the early days of this my recommendation would be to get on chat GPT start out with your work emails and then see what you can get start speaking and pulling the transcripts correcting things line by line, looking at the different ways you might say things, play around with the parameters. This is a really interesting tool. It's not like other AI tools. This is a sort of game-changing tool. It is extremely useful. Everything I've ever seen it write has been absolutely spot-on, perfect writing, which is strange, but also very exciting. So, let me know what results you come up with. Let me know if you find this to be useful for you. Let me know what other videos you might like me to make about this topic of using AI to improve your English. I think it is a very powerful tool. If you haven't done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also check out my full courses, including my free course, Natural English Conversations, in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.